Hello everyone, Ramadan Karim, Ramadan Mubarak. Yes, the month of Ramadan has started and this is the month that Muslims observe their compulsory one uh, one month uh, of, of fasting, which is either 29 days or 30 days. Uh, the as, as soon as one is of age, uh, this particular fasting is compulsory or one except where one has medical issues or you're traveling or you have jobs that are very uh, labor intensive that you have to manually do although a lot of people don't even take that option they would rather want to fast i've seen people who have been concerned asking whether i'll be posting uh videos in the month of ramadan on my youtube page. yes i will i might not be as active as i used to be on social media because normally i go off completely of social media but uh, but as it is the conversations are very important we must keep on uh the, uh the conversation and not be silent so yes i'm going to keep posting by the grace of god uh so to particular this particular video that i want to talk about is on the the directive that has come from tinibu that all the items, food items that the customs has seized should all be returned uh, to the to the owners of the seized items. The first thing when I saw when, when I saw that directly, I was like, uh uh before I like, okay, what now happens to the fact that the, the ones that they have shared you remember that custom had given out food uh rice that they, that they seized and sold them at very reduced price to the extent that unfortunately i think about four seven people rather seven people died in that unfortunate uh incident and uh now that they are saying uh, there's a directive so my first thought was uh, what's going to happen are they going to pay for that rice? Are they going to get new rice? Are they going to pay the people? But in, in looking closely at also the, from the report I've seen, it seems the directive is more directed at the one uh, of uh, the ones that were seized at border towns, something like that. And that the, the, the warning for them or the criteria for this release is that it has to be sold uh, in the Nigerian market. So many things that comes with that is the fact that we say we want to have, we want to be able to earn foreign exchange through means other than oil. Agriculture is one of the things that Nigeria has been working seriously towards to be able to raise money. And now, now even if it's export, you're stopping people from so because there's not enough. Instead of forced to tackle the main problem, the main problem that we have right now is the problem of insecurity. There's so much insecurity and people can't farm. And because of that, food is no longer enough. Farmers have been killed. Remember Zabar Mari farmers, 70, uh, 70 something, if I'm not mistaken, rice farmers were killed by Boko Haram terrorists simply because they had... Uh, arrested one of their own and handed to the police. And so the, the terrorists were angry. So they came, they killed them, decapitated them, cut off their heads and placed their heads on their back. Very gruesome death. Think about it. That's 70 rice farmers that used to farm rice for, for us to eat, right? Where do you where do you just replace those 70 farmers? I don't know how to farm. I don't know anything about farm. You're going to count about 70 of us. We don't know anything. Maybe 7 million of us that don't know anything. Those 70 million of us were actually taking care of our needs. And those have been taken away. So that's also, that's the main uh, problem that we have. But this video particularly... Why I'm doing this video is to say a few weeks ago we saw where the, uh, the report by Fisa Yosoyim, but the investigative journalist, uh, where he did a piece on custom and smuggling. And uh, you find out that there's someone uh, whom has been tagged as the, the number one Southwest smuggler in Nigeria. And this particular person is also uh, a close ally of of uh Bola Metinibu and you see him even when Bola Metinibu went to Dubai on that trip that they packed humongous amounts of uh, a number of people along with over a thousand of them to go to Dubai for a climate summit uh he was amongst the people that went there so this is a close friend of of Bola Metinibu where a piece has been done on him uh, on the fact that you know where he was even threatening to kill a custom officer for daring to stop some of his trucks 
that were that, that were smuggling things in and you could hear the custom officer you know feeling so sad and saying what did I do? What did I Because in all honesty, what did he do other than the fact that he was actually uh, doing his job? And of course, uh, this, this particular person, I.B. Dembe, was over, Bende was over there uh, making calls, all sorts, of, all sorts of calls that he was doing, you know, to some other people. And then after that also, Fisayo Soyimbo would also do uh, another piece to say that he has a hotel where a lot of custom officers, they just stay there free. So how are you fighting smuggling when you are in bed with smugglers? Now that a, a directive has come out of uh, from Bola Ametini, but the question is, is it a phone call that was made? Is it because of this particular smuggler? That's it. So this is what happens. So that's the thing. Is, it, is this being done because of him? Is this done by certain focus that he has done and, and, and stuff like that? No, because they say perception is everything, right? And this is a perception that this particular whole thing that has been done, this directive by Bola Metinibu, this is the message it sends. I'm in bed with these smugglers. If they make a phone call, I'm going to, I'm going to listen to them. Whether it's true or not, that's not that that's that that's the thing about perception it, it might totally be unrelated it might not be that the guy had the call it might not even be the kind of smuggling that that one is doing this one might be oh for the people that were caught that wanted to sort of like take food out of the country that's the one but looking at all the things that have happened in in, in the last few weeks this is the perception. This is the message that is sent out there. This is what is received. And in communication, when they're talking about communication, it's never really about what message did you send, but what message did the receiver receive and perceive uh, 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 to get. And, and this is that message that, that, that it's out, out there. Uh, Fisa Yosoyimbo has been calling out the Nigerian Customs Service to say they haven't done anything. You would think that with all of this revelation, with all of the investigative uh, reporting that uh, Fisayo did, that the Nigerian Customs Service would take it upon themselves to really look into it and, and put it right. Uh, right. You will also think that the Nigerian government will be very invested in this because you can imagine the number of uh, the amount of money that Nigeria is losing because of these smugglers that are coming in. Not just the amount of money, the, the kind of heinous things that also are happening to our country because this particular person is always is also said to smuggling uh, uh, drugs and smuggling uh, guns, ammunition, according to the investigative uh, report. So the harm that is being done to, to the country, the money that Nigeria is losing because people are going through other ways to bring in goods into the country without going through the official way where you pay their custom duties and levies. These are things that are affecting us. If then that is the case, why wouldn't Nigeria just say, okay, fine, no more cost, no more levy, no more anything, just bring in things, as long as they're legal things, bring them in through the borders. Let's even make Nigeria the kind of place where if you want very cheap things, you will come to Nigeria to come and buy them, like you have in places like Dubai. Why don't even put interest? Let people bring in their things. We have the population. Let other African countries then be coming to Nigeria to come and buy things because they can get them cheaply. And as soon as people are selling, before you know it's happening government focuses on infrastructure and the rest rest of the people will now come and even be building their own factories in nigeria to be able to supply the market that they already have instead of bringing it from their own places and in such a way you'll be able to create more jobs anyway that's where that's how me i always think out of the bus of when i think about governance we need to we need to just flip the whole economy. It's not to be the, the normal. We need to sit down and just look for things that will work for this country. Thank you so much for listening. And please, subscribe. You watch. You're watching. Subscribe. There are always more videos that come. Thank you. Bye.